Good morning, EMC family. Let us start with the prayer for peace, love, and understanding. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Your will, not mine, be done. Amen. And we start with one of the most beautiful views of Barbados, the Carlisle Bay Harbor. And this is taken from a very beautiful advantage spot this morning, looking towards looking towards it so you can see the Hilton in the background and um, the Old Aquatic Club and the beautiful Carlisle Bay Harbor. And you can see why this was a, a safe point for ships in the 16th and 17th hundreds of because of the natural curve of the land and how it would protect incoming ships. Good morning everybody. I hope you had a wonderful week. I'm back to work and I have to thank my family for a wonderful, wonderful reunion the week before. But this morning, we're on a site that has been here since the 1600s and it was called um, Indian Town. It was called St. Michael Town and eventually it was called Bridgetown because of the bridge that the Amerindians and the first settlers found across what is now the Constitution River. And we're looking at what is the Bridgetown Fisheries Complex with some of the boats still in safe harbor because we had Brent last week there have been a couple of other disturbances behind Brent and so I think they're all taking precautions and they're most probably using this time too to do repairs. So once something like Brent happens, you bring your boat in, you kind of more or less leave it. And here I am actually walking to the furthest point of Bridgetown from this point. It is so beautiful and as I pan, this morning you can see the beautiful old architecture of Barbados you can see tips of the mutual building you can see the old blue building there that had a lookout point for ships the central bank the old colonial bank which we know as Barclays which is now first Caribbean our beautiful Parliament clock tower and the lovely old treasury building and as you look at these buildings you can see the age of Bridgetown because some of them are new but some of them have kept the architecture of the day and just slightly modernize it Not just so we're gonna take a walk this morning into beautiful beautiful Bridgetown and as we watch another daybreak try to come through the clouds because our forecast yesterday was that we were gonna have showers at midnight heavy showers intimate showers and then we would it would be cooler today but of course um, as you can see we have dark clouds in the distance and that distance will most probably be heading towards St. Lucie East Coast is being looked at at that point in time from this distance but right now look at the beauty of the Sun coming through the clouds it's not spectacular against the dark on one side and the Sun's rays coming in on, the, on what is my right hand side, your left hand side. Isn't that just beautiful? Um, 
lovely 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 so i hope everybody has had a great week shout out to <laughs> patricia ben all right as you guys know i never walk alone on those saturday mornings ah, jeanette 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 you need to be released because that's all i have to say at this moment so good morning mary and caroline no nice to see you again yeah, it's so lovely for you to walk with me this morning. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> and I laugh at it because y'all guys know where y'all here. Mm -hmm. Who that is. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks. So he has to have his camera time. You think this is enough camera time? I expect Yes, please. You and me a camera time. Everyone else will show up. Oh, okay, okay. So, yes. Yes, all Have right. You shown everyone yourself yet? No, not yet. Your no. Uh, 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 I'm waiting for the strategic um, location with the, with the view. view. <laughs> oh, I'm going to find the perfect view. Oh, sorry, yes, uh huh. It's Nicole's historic tour day, so I'm not allowed to intervene. So we go off and all and have a great tour. See you all later. Yes, and we are going to hold our breath and do a count to see how long that lasts. <laughs> so. So what we're walking by is like the, the real end of the pier and um, I must say let me stand back so you get another view of it because all of this was created after the 1831 hurricane and uh, this whole area used to be called Molehead and then after the 1831 royal engineers were put in charge of creating a new wharf and this new wharf was, had been created in 1831. Of course, we've had improvements along the way because these boulders that you're seeing is a new addition to shore up. Um, if I turn and you just see the area between where the rocks end and where the new um, boardwalk is, that would have been the original structure all along here. But this has been reinforced and fortified because as the years go by, of course, damage will happen and we need to make sure that there is a safe passage for ships. Now, although we had settled at Whole Town, when Bridgetown was found, um, it, it, this, this natural inlet into Bridgetown made it become more of the capital of the city than Whole Town. And so we're going to show you one of the many wonders of Bridgetown. It is a beautiful city, part of, we have UNESCO heritage status, and it's because Bridgetown has remained in its original footprint since settled, since the 1600s, and that is amazing. There he is showing off again. Sorry, there is no other way to pan the camera this morning, because what we're walking alongside is where all the pleasure crafts have their party boats, so we're passing by MV Dream Chaser and all the other ones. You can see that I'm not much of a party animal. I'm sure Jackie will rattle them off for me shortly. So big shout out to everybody. Big shout out to Patricia and Marlon. Hi Tim, Steve, Cheryl, we are missing you. Jeanette, come home and release us from this torture called Nicholas Dean. Did I forget anybody else this morning? Oh, Kim. Kimmy Kim, we miss you. Tracy, when will you be back again? And to the lovely couple, and I know that Nick is going to give me a hard time that I forgot their names, um, that were walking with us for a couple of weeks ago. But, and... Angela and Dave. Thank you, Mary. Angela and Dave. And they're on their way back home. Um, safe journeys to you. And thank you so much for the birthday gift. It was thoroughly enjoyed. Thank you, Mary. Oh, dear Lord. The 10 second delay. So I'm hearing him 10 seconds after I say things to you, which is not comforting. So. Yes, I know he's heckling, but Jeanette will be back and I will find a day again where I walk with him during the week and I will do the heckle. <laughs> Little does he know. <laughs> so, our first stop this morning, <laughs> the 
10 second delay. He looks forward to it. Okay. <laughs> he is listening. So, through this fence, you will see all these um, tall metal poles that look just like bolts and screws and wondering what all of this is for yeah oh there's a gate over there that's open do i dare take that chance i don't think so <laughs> huh i can i i yeah uh, i would like to get a little closer huh it comes down the other way so the all right okay we're trying to see if we can get you a little closer to what is called Blackwoods Screw Dock and it's named after the gentleman who was the engineer who who built this and he was a Scottish gentleman and um, let me tell you a little bit more let me tell you his story and how this came to be but well, we were trying to see if there is a path a doorway that we could get into this you see a gate I don't want to walk my my family up and down the gate looks like it's open actually yes yes come on Nick is saying come on come on his adventures but this is the part of Nicholas Dean I love when he gets adventurous and we get to achieve what we want to achieve I go yeah Nicholas when he's giving trouble I was like oh my god Jeanette please come for him <laughs> but at this moment he is my most favorite brother in the world he has found me a path closer <laughs> yeah <laughs> so wow yes and the beauty about this is that there are signs in here ah okay so we're gonna go up on the platform. Hi, Nicole. How are you? I am fine. It's wonderful that you join me. Yes, I was telling everybody at this moment you are my sweet brother. Oh, because no. you found a path in. Only at this moment. Only at this moment. <laughs> Ten minutes from now, when you're giving me trouble, you are not. <laughs> so, this is called the Blackwood Screw Dock, and in 1770, the governor of the island imposed a tonnage duty on all shipping to the island to start raising the funds nest needed to extend build a new wharf at the mouth of the Carinage on reclaimed land where there was a small island on the location called the Molehead and that's where we started that view that I gave you panning back to Bridgetown that was called the Molehead in 1831, a hurricane destroyed a lot of the area. Royal engineers were put in charge of creating a new wharf. It was built by a Scottish engineer, John Blackwood. It took four years to complete. This took four years to complete, and it was opened on March 10th, 1883. It, day, it? it is the only correct it is the only surviving one of its kind in the world with a screw lifting facility so what would happen was ships would come into the screw dock so where this little boat is anchored they would come in this way to the screw dock they would be guided straight into the dock then a process would start to turn the wheels of the dock and slowly raise the ship completely out of the water the dock originally worked on steam, but was changed to electricity. So it had a steam engine and it was powered by coals. And then eventually they got electricity to work it. Sadly, now it's in disrepair. And they've been talking for years about um, putting it back in motion and letting persons see it actually working. There are signs around on the side explaining different parts of it and this would be the electrical part of it the electrical house right here do you know that i used to come down here and manually screw these up when yeah i can, can imagine yeah, i yeah, could yeah. just see you doing it <laughs> my sister is um her partner 
is one of the last trained um, screw dot masters and he ca he knows how this whole mechanism works and he speaks passionately about it when it comes up because he thinks that they should never be allowed to be in this state it should be preserved and and shown you know and and as i said it's it's one of the last surviving so here you can see the electric motor house so all the equipment is still here let me just drop my hand a little lower for you to see all of that And it is a beautiful sight. You can see all the work. So we're kind of standing on the deck. And all around are these little signs explaining every step of the process. And so something built in 1883 is still here in working order well not working order it would now be need to be revitalized but it gives you an idea and then they said this is the electrical house the electricity house so i'll read a little bit of this sign for you it says the electrical house would have been erected in 1953 as the screw dot transition from steam power to electricity the coal and steam process was a proven and dependable method of power what you see here today is untouched from when this facility was set up in 1953. Sadly, it has been exposed to the weather for many years, but the main components can still be seen. In the, in the day, this had been a complex electricity house, and in 1953, there was a single manager responsible for looking after the electricity power, powering process. The volume of electricity required for lifting the screw dot was significant and hence there are two main switches which had to be manually engaged very carefully. The Barbados Light and Power was established in Barbados in 1911 and was focused on supplying domestic electricity to the island in its initial existence. It was thought that the screw dot would drain the power supply to the Bridgetown area during the lifting process and the coal and steam process was a time proven alternative. This decision to move from coal to electricity must have been a decision that was not taken lightly. The main electricity line coming into the house is about two inches thick. This would have been normal gauge in the 1953 period for the supplying a, a large use, user of power. So the original amp gauge still remains today. So you, you see, I mean, that's really something to see this still here after all this time and so it is a shame that we have allowed one of the last remaining screw dots in the world to come apart okay i just feel mother nature sending some drops from heaven so i'm kind of waiting on nicholas <laughs> put nicholas in every try and error to see if it is actually still working no i wouldn't do that he is troublesome. Look at that. Look how, look at the erosion there. Uh, I would not try it. <laughs> yeah, but I suppose this is what they're talking about. That this would have, this would be the handle to pull down to, and this must have been one on the other side. So it had to be done manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is so beautiful. So we got closer than I could ever imagine. Yes. Just to let you know, that boat that's at the end there, mm -hmm. the, you see the big smiley on the side? Yeah. Right. Well, that is um, a new party boat that's coming to Barbados. The guy Sean on board says that he will um, let the people know his his barbies and partners and stuff oh. so that we can give them a little something when they start up. Oh, okay. okay cool. cool. No yeah. problem. Newest party boat. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. He's pulling it apart so it apart. Renovating. So it's, yeah. yeah. Up and up, yeah. But a historical yeah. heritage. And this, all of this is what makes Barbados a UNESCO heritage site where footprint has not changed. And this would be wonderful to have this restored and, you know, put back into some sort of working use. It can be done. We're doing other things. We can do this too. Heritage tourism is a big business. So, 
Mr. Nicholas, Hi. you're not here just for your beauty. I would need well, a, I sky I need. <laughs> yeah, a sky feel. A sky feel. A sky feel. Do you mean an umbrella? Yes, I need an so umbrella. You need, you need, you need <laughs> some kind of uh, sun shield? Uh, uh, sun shield or rain shield? <laughs> Me too. I thought he was rushing to save the gimbal too, but obviously he's not. Ah, well, look at the so, rainbow though, Nicole. It's a full one. Oh my goodness, guys, look at that. Okay, am I panning correctly? Yeah, no, it's but there is there. Look at it. A full rainbow. Hold that. Understand? The universe is speaking. Right? I don't I care. But I don't care if I get wet. That is just. That just made my morning. I'm taking pictures, Nicole, so I can't. So I can't the ancestors, you. all the people who have worked here on the screw dot, are saying yes, please. Have have it have it restored. Isn't that just beautiful? Gorgeous. A full Gorgeous rainbow. Yes. <laughs> the things that happen to us. Beautiful. Lovely, Caroline. Beautiful. Thank you. The things that happen I'm when we are. Boy, here. Apparently. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, I don't know. All right. So everybody. Wow, I could stay here all morning for you, right? But we have to keep moving. You just there is busy. so much to cover. <laughs> oh, thank you. That is so sweet. <laughs> Pardon me? Where? Right there. Yeah, so just on your left, um, just so you would know that area there, where is actually the burial ground for any slaves that did not make the trip over to Barbados um, that died on the ships and stuff this is where the official burial ground was in this general area here oh okay yeah. and it was paved over and yep. it was paved, paved yep. over not yep. cool wow yep. so and then obviously uh, the one up at Newton as I well I want as well yes but hence why the rainbow more significantly all those souls are saying yes and actually if you look through there we actually seeing the end of the rainbow kind of hitting absolutely beautiful yes kind of hitting the bridgetown um fisheries division isn't that so beautiful I like the but mm. i think they were all just speaking to us yes and acknowledging that they were present too yeah so good morning 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 so we are now into the beautiful Sun rise and walking on what is called heading towards what's called Cavens Lane. And a lot of these buildings, um, just as Nick spoke about, where slaves would have been held until they were sold. And um, a lot of them were used for slave sales. And <laughs> it, you know, as I said, it it kind of just hits home and there's the sign for the Blackwood Screw Dock a unique historic site established in 1887 so there's the actual doors <laughs> and that starts from the beginning so this is left open like this this is really sad though this needs to be looked at and protected yeah and the thing about this building, uh, my office, one of my, when I worked at a company, um, our office was in one of these buildings. The ground, the very bottom of these buildings are empty. They stand on pillars because this is all swamped. And in those days, the way it was done um, at high tide, there's a section of the building that you can actually open and look down and see the water. So the water from the wharf runs all underneath these buildings. Hence why they're still standing. So let me stand back a little further so you can see. And that was an experience to see that one hurricane season. Um, my office used to be the second window and we lunch? yeah my <laughs> office was the second window and we went down the stairs it was it was hurricane season and we heard this splashing splashing and when we went a little down one more floor down there was a open manhole that you could open and you looked down and you actually saw the wharf underneath there so the oh. structure of the building is done that way because of this landscape and and the sinkage of building was done that way so there are almost piles underneath the building to keep it stabilized 
and this would have been sugar bond it would have been a slavery bond and um, the mere fact that it is still standing tells you the architecture of the day of course if I could just remember those doors I think those doors are the green doors that's where the warehouse used to be I think yes uh -huh, I remember the warehouse days <laughs> and the slide oh yes wow that no okay that's that's memories <laughs> That has memories. Hmm? You want to walk down here? For okay, yeah, so we can walk. Which way? Oh, so this is down, we call this Cavens Lane. And this whole area well, was where. Uh, huh? Look how lovely these awnings are over here. Yes, yeah. These awnings were always like this. Yeah. It's strange how these buildings are built up. It's like triangle. Yeah. You want me to go down and go around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I know you don't want to walk yet. Yeah, oh, okay. All right. No, no, no. Just check in. Just check in this morning. We're having some fun. So we're going down Cavens Lane. And wow, how time has stood still. These buildings all belong to the Costas, Mussons, which eventually became the s &T, which eventually now became Nila Massey. And I don't want to pan there because there's a homeless person having his morning rest. But that entrance above, right there, second door ramp, was where my office used to be. And so, all down here, all of these areas used to be. And still, some people still use it for cargo storage. But you have to remember that this, this is where the ships would come in. And they offload and we didn't have the deep water harbor. In the 16th and 17th century, this was the main commercial area of Bridgetown. And so a lot of these buildings were built for storage at the bottom and offices at the top, or counting rooms as they were called in those days. And so we are on the other side, further up, walking along this beautiful path. I used to take you to the waterfront cafe, which was a fantastic jazz spot and beautiful food. The dry dock you see behind us as well. Yeah. Dry dock restaurant and bar. Oh, that I never right, remember that dry dock. Okay. It still says dry dock, but it's not really open. Right uh, there, oh yes, yes, dry yeah, dock, so dry dock, yes. And you know, this is the one of the most popular sites that was used in Outer Banks Street. Oh and no. And also part of two as well. Right here is where the pirates came in, and this is where they had the board more and stuff. All oh, okay. Right here. Well, I yeah, I haven't sat down yet to watch what? Outer Banks. You know. Yeah, I have been watching other things on that like so I have to do that. <laughs> so, actually, this morning, as we were down by the at the end of the wharf, I realized I have an old old picture. I'll see if I can find it in my archives of the colonial building from the back. And I just realized this morning that it was taken from that angle at the end of the wharf looking back. So this building too has been here since the early 1700s. And it was the Colonial Bank, then it became Barclays, and, it was, and it's now First Caribbean. I remember the manager of this bank was the, the gentleman who came up with the idea for Hastings um, Hastings Rocks. He was the manager at that building at the point in time. <laughs> and so we're coming around the corner. Good morning. Oh, this is beautiful. It's nice to walk along. Yes. We don't normally get to do these kind of walks walking along here. And Bridgetown is so beautiful this morning. The old treasury building, the cenotaph in memory of the persons who fought in the two world wars the sorry about that I have no control over architecture um, the fountain which is right behind the cenotaph which was the marker to introduce pipe water into Bridgetown
and again you see that um, with bread coming a lot of the ships a lot of boats or pleasure craft that normally would be here are now inside the inner basin for that security and protection So I think that this is a beautiful view against the drop back, that lovely, of the Parliament buildings. This is the seat of the Parliament of Barbados and it was built between 1870 and 1874. The buildings have been the meeting place for both Chambers of Parliament since June 16, 1874. Prior to the establishment of the buildings, the Parliament met at the Town Hall building, which is beside the Carnegie Library on Coleridge Street. And actually that building that was the original location for Parliament has now been refurbished and it is this is part of the courts, but it sits right behind the Carnegie Library on Coleridge Street. A prominent feature of the, of the Parliament buildings is the coral limestone structure, which is the clock tower. The tower located in the west wing can be seen from several vantage points around Bridgetown and is complemented by a four-faced clock. So there are four faces to the clock on each side. This was not the original location of the clock. The clock, it was located on the east wing and it was twice or three times the size as of this, of this clock. But due to poor soil conditions, the clock tower base began to sink within 10 years after its construction. The clock tower has sunk about 10 feet into the ground. So the, that structure on the other side, three times that size, and that started to sink. And the clock tower will be approximately where is the entrance, that's where it was, about there. Approximately where the entrance of where you would enter into the parliament. The tower was dismantled in 1884 and the clock tower was constructed on the west wing in 1875. It was it's designed to run for eight days and will continue to operate while being wound again. In 2010, the clock was damaged during Tropical Storm Thomas and the hand stopped at 2.12. Smith of Derby Group refurbished the clock. So and she has been sitting there since 1875 in that new location so we're gonna keep it the what these parts they look like parts of a four poster bed oh <laughs> oh no i think that's the beauty of it yes and then upstairs there was another restaurant here as well so we're passing alongside where uh, waterfront cafe used to be in these buildings right here in this location waterfront cafe used to be right here and it was used to be a really lovely lime to bring friends out to on the evening I, I keep hoping that um, we will focus on revitalization of Bridgetown and that Bridgetown doesn't go to sleep at 4.30 when everybody is heading out, that there's now another life that happens in Bridgetown, that we have bars and restaurants open again, people living in living spaces in Bridgetown, so that, you know, it has a second life after a certain time. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, you keep hearing him, don't you? <laughs> and here we are going under, going by the Independence Arch. This was the first put down in 1966 to celebrate the independence of Barbados. And then over the years it got damaged. And then a new one, this new one was put in place in 1987. So I'm going to step a little further back and so you can see the beauty of the arch. I 
I just think this morning Bridgetown is just being so beautiful for us. So there is the Independence Arch and it has the coat of arms of the country, the pelican, the flying fish, the pride of Barbados, the pledge, um, Arrow There is a plaque inside again for him and um, it tells you a story of Barbados and her independence and the broken trident at the top. And I mean the view even for Mary and the boats is, is just fantastic this morning. So these this bridge used to be called the Swing Bridge. Um, it's still called the Swing Bridge and um, before it would swing, literally swing on a side. Now it lifts completely and um, these these ships and it's lovely to see it lift. Um, I wish that they had a schedule so you could get an idea and come and actually see it being lift. But it's like a luck and chance that you may see it. But it's a beautiful thing to see. So we're going to be taking a stroll into Bridgetown, the heart of Barbados. And I love Bridgetown on Christmas Eve. Traffic back up, tons of people on sidewalks, and everybody trying to meet at the ideal store. Good morning. And um, you know, people meet me in front of K Shepherd, meet me in front of K Shepherd. You're going down? Meet me at K Shepherd. At K Shepherd, Bridgetown is packed to capacity. My mother had a habit. She would have done all of her shopping, everything wrapped. In the process of doing Christmas, um, getting ready for Christmas Day. But she would find a reason every year to be downtown on Christmas Eve. And I think it was just a social thing for her. She didn't really need anything. Oh, come 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 and drop me into town and you circling and circling and circling because they can't find parking the car parts part to capacity she you drop her off in front of Kay Shepherd so you got a circle and she is having a ball when she gets back in the car she told you how many people she's met who she's seen and she just she just lived for that moment we didn't like it because once we learned to drive my father kind of passed over that duty to us and we are here on this beautiful boardwalk and this is an addition um when i was a youngster you literally if you were coming down the wharf you were either driving right next to the edge of the wharf and looking deep into the greenage or you're walking alongside it and most people would always when they got to the bridge got there by the bridge they would cross over and walk next to Nelson well he's no longer there but you would walk off and cross and go because this section was bam against the the wharf and the road and sometimes the way cars would pass and come down there it was crazy so the boardwalk is a new addition and so is this whole area of course Wonderful, that's perfect timing. So as I got there, the lights change. And isn't that just beautiful? And there is the old treasury building, which is now going to be um, improved, which is going to be turned into housing eventually. And we're at the top of Broad Street. This beautiful building, the Royal Bank, has been here. It's been modernized over the years. But the self-help was almost, which is where those glass doors are at the bottom. Um, the self-help used to be right there. And this used to be a separate building. This used to be two buildings. The Royal Shop on one side, the Royal Bank on one side, sorry. And the... Um, self-help building it was an older building and the self-help would be at the bottom with all the jams and comfort and 
everything that you could think of coconut bread whatever and also smoking basketry you name it was at the south out and it was started it was started by lady gilbert carter and a, a group of ladies and this was to help women <laughs> help women to um help women to 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 earn their own income so therefore you you did cottage industries that's what they were called and you and you sold it to the women's self-help and it was there uh, it's nice to know that although they have modernized the building and everything they've kept the memory of the doors that were once the self-help right there so that's lovely and of course i need to kind of pan and step back Uh, uh, I'm, I'm really not looking at the camera this morning but this wonderful building here was this used to be is now Shafet it was the Costa Man Inns and they would sell furniture and appliances on the first two floors approximately on the third floor of this building was the music section and all the music equipment and records and all that I used to spend as soon as I had earned my my money, my um, allowance, I would come up here and buy records. And I remember this being Manning's and being a, a, a department store. Now it is Shafet. Also, along the walls, there are plaques to talk about the slave route. And this area was called the cage. Established by an Act of Parliament in 1688, the cage was originally located at the top of Modern Day Broad Street in the area next to the Shafet restaurant. It was a temporary prison made of wood and wire used to imprison runaway slaves until their owners came to reclaim them. Due to the noise and stench made by the slave, which it was felt presented a poor image of the island's capital, the Bridgetown Merchants petitioned Parliament to remove the cage from its central location. In 1818, it was removed from its original site and transferred to the Pear Head, which is where we, where Nick talked about that area this morning. So that was one of the beautiful things that they had done recently was to put up all these signs so that you can see. Now, I know this building as Norman Center, but I've been told that it was called Fogarty's, and so that was before my time but I understood that it was a fantastic department store lovely things yes I remember where the Barbados Public Workers Credit Union as I walk alongside them now here this used to be Waidilima if everybody can remember that Waidilima used to be here it was a jewelry store so yes I'm gonna start dating myself so don't don't hold it against me this used to be Waidilima and then where Columbia Amherst used to is now used to be Knight's Pharmacy, Knight City Pharmacy. And I always remember that because um, I would go to church at James Street. My aunt was very diligent. She made sure that all her nieces and nephews went to James Street. Good morning. This is a good friend of mine. He's just got a promotion to manager. Congratulations. I saw your promotion. You can't hear me. You can't hear me. I know. <laughs> he just got a promotion to country manager. This is a very, very good friend of mine. Good morning. I'm on air, but I was just telling you congratulations. I understand you were just promoted to country manager. That was a joke. Uh -huh. You probably made it a joke. Okay. I'm on live, so I will talk to you later. <laughs> But this building where he is used to be Knight's Pharmacy, Knight City's Pharmacy. So I was telling the story that I would leave James Street Church. My aunt would make sure that we come to church. And then um, a part of the service you would leave to go off to Sunday school. A whole group of friends, I will not call their names because they're still friends. Um, we would leave church and come down to either Collins and Knight's. I would buy books. I would... Um, sweets we would laugh talk and we would always get back in time 
just before service finished. We had it timed to perfection. The things that you do as teenagers. But, <laughs> yes. So this building, which is now called Barbados Duty Free, is, oh, it's still up there. Ah, at the top, the signature clock of Cave Shepherd. And this, in December 17, 1906, Mr. Rupert George Cave and James Packard Shepherd. Remember I tell you about names and places in Barbados? They're very simple. We don't get technical. Cave Shepherd is, made, is, is named after two men. One was a cave and one was a shepherd. These gentlemen who had been engaged in a provision business in Palmetto Street, and Palmetto Street is right behind Parliament, open a dry goods store at number 10 Broad Street. So this is number 10 Broad Street that we're looking at. The founders reckon they enjoy a, critical, a crucial point of difference over their many competitors, an accurate knowledge of customer needs and desires, and they were right. The store was overrun in the lead up to its planned grand opening on the 4th of February, 1907. Promptly, the partners posted the part, promptly, the partners po positively refused admittance to all and any today because before they could open, what little that they were putting in the store and the view of the store made people start coming in and buying. And they were scheduled to open on the 2nd of February 1907. It was a Saturday. My notes. okay the joys of doing all of this but they okay here's the rest of my notes about k shepherd haha ha. the manager the local newspaper of the time which was called the agriculture reporter said that the manager said that the customers will be were well reserved well worth the wait by waiting until monday when the windows are properly dressed and the shelves re arranged in proper order so Kay Shepherd always had these beautiful storefront windows. Two days later, the newspaper carried a bold advertising invitation in bold capital letters. Come today to the Ideal Store. And for the last 116 years, the Ideal Store has been here. It had a fire in 1969, but it rebuilt. And now it's called Barbit Bridgetown Duty Free. But to all of us who got us, a Bajan in us, a, a speck of, of love in this country. We still call this Cave Shepherd the ideal store, and this is the meeting point for thousands of people when they come into Bridgetown. I think I have to cross the road for you to see the beauty of the other store, the other building that parallels Cave Shepherd, and that is the colonial building now called first garbine and i don't know if i could pan if i could give this enough view for you to see how beautiful this is but this building too has been here since the 1700s and it is fortified sorry gentlemen and it's fortified and it has always been a bank um if you ever, uh, my mother worked here when it was Barclays, and I got a, a, a chance as a child to see the inside vault. It is a magnificent piece of work. And so you see that Bridgetown had commerce from as far back as we can remember. Yes, I think I have to. Once again, cross back. I seem to have lost Nicholas. Good morning. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I think they want to see, let like you see how beautiful the sky is this morning. Yes, James Street Methodist. Okay, just making sure I have y'all because Bridgetown is starting to wake up. <laughs> Yes. 
where this Paradise Beauty Supplies is. That used to be Mademoiselle. I don't know if everybody remember that. And Mademoiselle had a shoe branch here. One in the old Sunset Crest Mall. One up at Wilde, but beautiful shoes. Um, I remember when Tina Turner came out with Private Dancer. If you ever look at those video, at that video in the end, she's wearing these beautiful black patent leather shoes. And I remember thinking, wow, I would love to get a pair. And walked into Mademoiselle two or three days later and they had them at, I think it was 75 or $80. That was a lot of money in those days to pay for a pair of shoes. But I wore those shoes with pride. <laughs> I always remember that I got them from Mademoiselle. Yes, yeah, Mademoiselle's shoe store. We're right now under the sign of Collins. And Collins has just changed hands. But Collins has been here at number 28 Broad Street. I think the, their sign tells the year. I have to play. I'm playing dodgeball up in, in Broad Street. <laughs> so Collins has been open since 1888 and in this location. And now it has changed hands, sadly. But um, carries so many wonderful things. Good morning. Good morning. And the colonnade. Again, another building that has not lost its architecture or its beauty this company also was started by mr david da costa in 1868 after he bought out his two partners and of course the colonnade when it was da costa's store it would be um i'm sure y'all remember because i remember that they had a beautiful, as you came through this first door, there was um, women's um, apparel, panties, bras, and they always brought in things from St. Michael's in England. And they brought a lot of products from England. And um, you knew that once you bought something from the Costas, it would last. And then on the second floor were haberdashery and um, clothing and kitchen wear and all that sort of stuff and at the very back which is now like the side entrance to the mall or the back of the mall was the haberdashery section where you had um curtain tape and and um notions and all those sort of things and my very first christmas job was in this building i was 17 years old and i um uh gentleman by the name of and i'm trying to remember his name i don't want to embarrass myself because he was such a sweet gentleman um <laughs> it will come back to me but he gave me my first job made sure that i was my first christmas job made sure that i was signed up for national insurance and i worked in the harbor dashery section i call i pulled so much um, curtain tape because in those days curtains never came with those big loops you had to buy curtain tape and you had to stitch it onto the curtain and then you had to use the three prong hooks or one prong hooks by the end of Christmas I could pull 10 yards of curtain tape without using a measuring stick I was that good so I always remember that and you know thankful to him for that first job he was and I just walked in and I said I said who I was, I said what school I went to and I was looking for a Christmas job and he said sure when the school finished and I said so you come back, report and I stayed up to time to go back to school so I'm hoping that I will remember his name before I finish this blog. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Well, I have to give you one more story before I wrap up this is the joy of having notes okay. 
Broad Street. Ooh, thank you, Mary. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to tell you a little bit about this area. Right, looking back from here. So from this point back to Nelson was called Broad Street. We now know this whole area as Broad Street. But actual fact, from this point all the way down was called Cheapside. And a statue of 1657 declared it to be reserved as a marketplace and for other public purposes of the island. It was given the name Cheapside later in the 17th century. It was called Exchange Street because of the merchants exchange was started there. Another name was New England. And since 1703, this area has been called Broad Street. So I want you to understand that Broad Street started from this point, back this way, and, and, and going in the opposite direction was Cheapside. They call something Lower Broad Street. Right. Down. So they call this now Lower Broad Street. But that is the original, this is the original Broad Street. And I think that the name came from England because Broad Street in the city of London is one of the 25 original wards. And a ward is like an electoral di district. For those who live in England can I explain that to you. But that, that is how I think the name of Broad Street came about to be because it was part of the city of London. And because we were so colonialized at the point in time, that's why this was called Broad Street. We wanted to show you so much more this morning, but one, we're concerned that we've misplaced Nicholas, so we need to go and find him. And two, I have been talking to you for an hour. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that. So I promise you that we're gonna try and pick up from here and take you the other half of Broad Street because there's so much more history. We drive up and down on this one little street and we think, just passing here but there's so much that has gone on in Broad Street and one of the things I forgot to show you along the way is the gates for the slaves and things like that so um, there's just so much more to show so this morning on behalf of the three of us yes we will <laughs> see you next week I hope you guys enjoy this just, just a little taste of beautiful beautiful Bridgetown and I promise you, we will finish Broad, Broad, Broad Street. I'm competing against the truck. Because it's that time in the morning when Bridgetown is starting to wake up. So we will continue and finish the rest of Broad Street onto Cheapside and into Kensington Fountain I promise you, we're going to do all of that in the next coming weeks. I have rested. I am back. <laughs> And it's so great to have all of you present this morning. I hope you enjoy these little snippets. I hope I brought up some memories and share some moments of, of my childhood. And I hope you remember things that you did when you got your first can can dress and that shirt that you love and you know the hat that you bought or your present day memories of just coming home and walking this beautiful, beautiful street that is part of our beautiful island. So on behalf of all of us, we thank you. Have a great day and I'm going to leave you with this beautiful view of Broad Street from its original junction.